keep us from the love of the Father. From the love, from your love. There is no height, no depth, nothing spiritual or natural that can keep us from the love of the Father. I hope you are well and uh, we're finding you in high spirits today because we're going to have a look at some really interesting stuff which is microphone technique okay so this here is a standard shore sm58 microphone okay so this is your standard performance mic they um they are cardioid and they're dynamic microphones now a cardioid microphone is a, um it means the way that it picks up the sound um is in like a heart shape so now ideally you want to use one of these mics nice and close to your mouth. Some people say two fingers between your mouth and the microphone. Some people say be right up close to it. If you're sharing a mic at the moment, you need to be very, very careful. Obviously, there are special anti-back wipes you can get specifically to avoid damaging uh, your microphones. Right, so in terms of using these microphones, there are things to bear in mind. So Good dynamic microphones are great for recording instruments as well. Um, they're also fantastic for accenting the natural timbre of a voice. Condenser mics, however, slightly different. This is a condenser microphone, recording condenser microphone. Now this one's a Samsung, this one's a Shaw, but there are lots of different varieties of mics which actually do the same job. Um, and uh, will pick up a really good sound. Now, a condenser mic is really nice for recording vocals, particularly. Every voice is slightly different, though, and it is recommended that you try lots of different microphones if you're setting up a studio for the first time. Um, so, condenser mics sweeten and accentuate the timbre of brighter voices. So, particularly good for female singers or a brighter sounding uh, singer. Um, it gives you a cleaner, less muffled recording as well, um, which is obviously ideal when you're wanting to get a message across through your music. The other thing to think about when you're singing into a microphone is to actually sing through a mic. Um, this one, this is the front of the mic with the label, so I'd have that part facing me. Sing through it as if you're singing at the wall behind, so you're not, your stopping point isn't the mic here. Um, you're actually sending the sound as if you would in a performance setting. The polar patterns in terms of where the microphone picks up the sound in some condenser microphones can be switched between cardioid, which is like a heart shaped, omnidirectional, which is one pickup sound all the way around. Um, the cardioid one actually um, reduces the amount of sound it picks up at the back. So because it's a heart shape, it's picking up at the front and it has much less pickup at the back. An omnidirectional one will pick up all the sounds in the room so all the sounds reflecting off the walls and things will be picked up by the microphone omnidirectional is great if you've got a big group all stood around singing because it will pick up everybody um, a cardioid microphone won't pick up the people stood at the back of the microphone um, a bi-directional microphone won't pick up anyone at the sides of a microphone so it's very important to know what type of microphone you're using in order to get the best quality recording and um, so definitely worth having a think ask your sound engineer what type of microphone is that is it a condenser mic is it a dynamic microphone and how where does it pick up the sound how do i need to sing into that in order to get the best quality sound definitely worth having that conversation now the polar patterns um, of some condenser mics can be switched between cardioid omni and bi-directional um, you're likely to use one type of microphone when you're in the studio. It's definitely worth knowing what type of microphone that is and ensuring that you're singing appropriately to the pickup pattern or the polar pattern of that particular mic. Uh, ribbon mics are also bi-directional. They're not used that much anymore, um, but they're great for the kind of really vibey, jazzy, bluesy sound. Some gospel um, would benefit from a ribbon mic. And also um, for picking up perhaps uh, slightly brighter voices that are too bright it might actually tone that and tame that down a little as well so but um depending on what you've got available to you it's important to know what the best approach to that particular microphone is um, remember your natural tone and the techniques that you use to record will affect the sound the way that you're singing will affect the sound just as much as the microphone 
Now you'll notice I've got a shock mount on this. This prevents any natural movement and things from impacting on the sound and impacting on the pickup of that microphone as well. Um, other things that you tend to add in a studio setting would include a pop shield as well. And that would help to reduce any puh -puh -puh sounds and puh -puh -puh sounds that pick up. Um, some uh, studio technicians will also position your microphone slightly the side of your mouth, um, which uh, also reduces some of that popping and some of that clicking that you might get and sibilance. So that sounds and sounds. There are special gadgets that you can buy that actually take some of that out. Um, but if you're not careful and you use that too much, it can make you sound like you've got a lisp because it takes all the out. So it's about using that and getting good balance. But if you're starting off with a really good quality vocal recording that's thinking about those things, you'll avoid some of the work uh, when it comes down to mixing and mastering your track as well. Brilliant. So condenser mics are considered better for voices generally. Hopefully that's what you've got your recording. If not, that's absolutely fine. You will get a good recording with a dynamic microphone. Um, but condensers are generally considered better. I said I was going to show you what a cardioid mic looks like. So one of these has a heart shaped pickup. So standing at the back of this microphone is not going to be very beneficial. You need to be at the front where the heart shape, the front of that heart shape um, will be picking up your voice. Um, I'm going to show you that. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. So that's what a cardioid microphone looks like um, in terms of the polar pattern. And that, that just describes the way that it picks up the sound. So this part here at the front is the bit that's going to be hopefully picking up your voice. So you need to really be singing towards that heart shaped part of the microphone. But you're bi-directional. You can see there, there's a big circle it's like a figure of eight really so that doesn't pick up the sound at the sides and um, it only picks up sound from the front and the back of the microphone um, and omnidirectional that's just one big circle if you can see it the omnidirectional microphone will actually pick up sound from the entire room so if you're recording an entire choir or a band and you've got one mic in the middle an omnidirectional mic will pick up sound from all the way around the room uh, so that will give you a nice quality on the recording there. Okay, so um, different types of distortion that you want to avoid. There are certain items of jewellery and clothing that will pick up when you're recording. Now it's definitely worth knowing about this before you go in because there's no point getting a brilliant audio, amazing performance and you've got this necklace on that's going all the way through it. Okay, been there, done it. Try to avoid it in the future. So basically any jewellery that you've got that's a bit jangly, some bracelets, some earrings, things that jangle and jingle, try not to wear them when you're doing your recording. Um, they might look wonderful for your live performance and actually your dynamic mic when you're performing might not pick up those sounds so much. They might not be quite so disturbing in a live performance setting. But when somebody is trying to edit your track and all they can hear is you singing, yay! very difficult for them to then pick up those bits. So if you can avoid the bits in the first place, you're actually onto a huge winner um, there. So avoiding those things. Also sibilance in terms of your T's and S sounds, um, trying to avoid too much of that when you're singing, curbing it down, making sure your diction is nice and clear, but you're not over uh, popping or raise. There is a device called a DS. -er. Masters will actually add to a track afterwards to take some of that sibilance off. Um, but if we can avoid too many nasties in our recording, it definitely helps. Um, pop shield, I've mentioned, I'll bring that out again. So we pop our pop shield. Now this pop shield, to be effective, needs to be, ideally, between you and your recording mics. You wouldn't use a pop shield in a live performance setting, um, partly because it's not very uh, sociable to have this in front of your face. Um, so you'd have your pop shield positioned about there and you'd be singing into the microphone. But again, your sound technician will position you where they want you. Ideally, your mic should be roughly where your mouth is. 
okay so at the same level you don't want it too high you don't want it too low they may angle the microphone again a little to avoid some distortions but ideally you want to be singing into that and because this is a cardioid microphone you want to be singing directly into the front part of this microphone when we're recording enjoy take care see you next time bye